Let's go over to our man, Mr. Daryl Mott at Apex Investing. Daryl Mott, what's going on, brother? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great, Boy, man. Darryl. Yourself? Hey, doing fantastic. So China's giving us some volatility lately here. Huh? Yeah, China, man, that market uh, is a little, a little rocket ship. There's no two ways about it. I thought everything was going to be good. Yesterday morning, we started off with we almost got a deal, and then 10 o'clock rolled around, and yeah. the market rolled around, too. <laughs> well, do you see they also cut all their housing prices by 10%? Like the largest housing company cut all their houses by 10% on the buy prices, and um, they're also cutting their automobile prices like crazy. So they're trying to do what they can to figure out how to stimulate things and get things going. Well, that'll get us some stimulation. Sure, right. You know, yeah, who's going to pay? Who's going to pay the bills for all the debt that's out there? Though? We've seen when China tries to intervene, though. It's like that usually means there's problems, and they that's really tough to intervene to the level that you can prop up a market that big. Yeah, yeah. So, and I think that's sort of what's been weighing on the markets here. So it's that whole. And like, you know, folks, people, you, you know, there's really the economic, the fundamentals there. Of, you know, China's massive, and I think what is it, seventy-five percent of their Income is in real estate, or their their savings is in real estate on families over there. Okay. Compared to like twenty five percent in the U S. So when their real estate goes down, like, they like takes everything down. Yeah, and you know what happens, folks, is that you can, like, when I when I look back, I remember even. 10, 15, well, let's see, 10 years ago would be, yeah, more than that now, because we're talking 2005, 2006, the whole world thought that China was going to go bust because they were building so dramatically, and they, had, they were called empty cities. Well, guess what? Most of those cities are totally filled up. Not only filled up, but they're making money hand over fist. So I guess when you get a, a country that has only been in capitalism, some sort of capitalism anyway, the last uh, 30 years, that's what happens, you know? Um, Shanghai, man, the Shanghai just went from 2440 up to 3000 in two months. Not a bad pop. Oh, my God. <laughs> Amazing. So currency-wise, what are we looking at currency-wise out here, Daryl? Uh, well, I mean, pound and euro, right? Yeah. So implied volatility shooting up on those. Um, so it causes some good movement. And uh, those are really, you know, pound dollar, euro dollar have been the two I've been looking at today. So what about yourself? Yeah, and that, well, I mean, we know that's all about Brexit, and that's the thing that, uh, between the pounds yeah. and, the, and the euro, that's what's going to move the dollar. It is, you know, in the last couple of days, uh, both of them were basically, you know, slightly weaker. There's no doubt. The, the pound looks to me like it really wants to go topside in a huge way. I mean, you get two different, you yeah. know, trends that have gone up, and they both have confluence on the way up, you know. But, it, yeah, it basically just keeps fighting for that. There's a lot of positive expectations. They're going to figure something out. And, you know, I, it's one of the, it's hard to read. It's like a big soap opera going on over there. So It's pretty crazy. But, I mean, we're in March, right? And we've been talking about March 29th for years. And uh, guess what? It's March of 2019. And, and is there any clarity? There is. I, I'm a little sarcastic in that the hard Brexit, there's some clarity. But <laughs> no, the hard there. Brexit, there is. There but is. other than that, there isn't. You, you, if you ask even three months ago, how much clarity are you going to have on, what is it, the 6th of March, 5th of March? You would have said, I hope more than we have right now. Right. Um, but the market, avoiding that one thing of a hard Brexit, that's almost all the market really cares about well, at this it, point. It seems like one day that, personally, I think there's going to be an extension, and the real question is going to be, is it a large extension or a small extension? And then the next day, it's like, okay, May might pull this off. I mean, it, 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 every day... When you say pull this off, what does that mean? What is, I don't even know what her pulling it off is at this point. That's all I'm... Pulling it off is that they'll sign away exactly you gotta, how, how it is right now. Meaning, because yet what she did yesterday is they gave $2 billion to a couple counties that have all the labor secretaries in it. Yes. And if they get her, her, them on her side, what she has on the table right now will pass, even okay. with the backstop in it. Okay. You know, so it's like, okay, it's, if that's, you know, this is like a game of chicken extraordinaire. Yeah, that's <laughs> how any negotiation really is, so, yeah. Pretty intense, It is, man. it is. Pretty intense. It is, man. We'll yeah. see, March 29th. At the end of the day, though, it adds volatility, which is good for us as traders. Definitely. So. There's no doubt. Folks, you can find Daryl every trading day at apexinvesting.com. Daryl, you have a great one, safe one. Hey, are you getting cold in Texas, too? or did it get Oh, up? it is. It has been insanely cold here, yes. So it got down that far. Wow, man. Yeah, wow. single digits. Okay. Chill. Yeah. Stay warm, brother. All right, brother. You, too. Uh, stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow down 15, NASDAQ off 12, S&Ps are off 4.5. We'll come right back.